Hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with me, Anne Welsh. Today's guest is a lady who has been appointed Chief Revenue Officer for Time. I admire her, I admire her strengths. Not only is she taking on this challenging role, she's a mother, she's a wife, and she's also a friend to many, like myself. Welcome. Victoria. Welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with me, Anne Welsh. Today's guest, as, pre- as I've previously mentioned, is Victoria. She's a friend, but at the same time, someone I really admire. I'll let her tell you her story. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining me on this platform. It means the world to me, as you know. Who is Victoria? And just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, Well, thank you for having me. Um, It truly is a pleasure to be here. Um, I have seen um, a lot of the work that you've done and I think it's inspiring and it's inspiring people around the world. So um, it truly is my pleasure and honor to be part of this conversation. Um, Who am I? Um, It's a loaded question. (laughs) I um, I am a friend, I am a wife, I am a mother. Um, I'm also someone who's been growing up in a very intense corporate environment and um, been working a lot with people um, before in the US, then in um, Europe, Middle East and Africa, and now on a global scale. So what would you describe your role as if, uh, if, someone, is, if someone is out there trying to understand what exactly would be, how would you define your role? Well, I'm responsible for all the advertising revenue for time across all platforms for uh, print, digital, mobile um, events, live events, as well as now virtual events. Okay, so you work in a very male dominated world. And I know I used to work at Lehman Brothers and I knew how male dominated I, I was placed at that very, you know, very aggressive sales and marketing traveling a lot, you are in that role, but you are the more senior position in that role. How do you navigate yourself? How did you navigate yourself to get to that position in this, in this time and age as well? Um, it's an interesting question and I think very timely one as um, there've been so many conversations um, around equality and especially now with uh, the, the pandemic that we just faced. Um, To be quite honest, I don't think I've ever differentiated myself or thought of myself female versus male. I think um, I've always worked to the best of my abilities. I've always um, able to speak up and I've always had to, if I had a point to make, I always made it. And um, I think the biggest difference, and this is what I see now with young women, um, is that they do question themselves a lot. And having that voice of confidence in yourself and having that word of confidence of your ability to navigate um, situations, issues, challenges, um, that's what makes it really um, important and that's what makes a difference. When you actually realize that you understand the situation and you have the right solution, you offer your solution, not with a question, not with um, shyness around it, but confidently because you believe in it. And I think that's the biggest difference that I'm seeing right now in big conversations um, with uh, men and women where women may have the right answer and the right solution, but they're being very coy about how they offer it. And when you're not sure about your answer, nobody else will. So you may have the right solution and the right answer, but if you don't state it affirmatively, people won't believe in it. So you've just talked about that some of the challenges that we women will face, um, you know, airing our voices because we're not comfortable enough. But how would you advise a young girl right now looking to, you know, progress in her career, how to get her voice known, how to get herself, her present known in the workplace, especially in a male dominated world? that and she knows that she this is where I need to go I need to reach this level but she's just not confident enough how would you what advice would you give someone in that position 
Um, I think the, the, the best advice I would probably say is I never necessarily thought of myself that I need to be here and I'm here. I've oh. always done the best job I could have possibly done in a position that I was in. And then I happened to be moving up because people have recognized it. Oh. Um, so um, in my very first job, someone once told me, um, you don't need to ask for promotion. If you deserve it for promotion, you will get it. It doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen with everyone. I am that kind of a manager because um, I do believe in talent and I do believe in cultivating talent. So I've promoted many people without them ever asking me um, to be promoted because I've recognized their talent and I think they should be doing things that are bigger. Um, as far as um, how women should be approaching the situation and grow, I think how do you make yourself smarter? How do you educate yourself about what you do? Don't think of yourself as different because you're not, you're a human being and you have the knowledge or as much of a knowledge as a person next to you, male or female. The minute that you start putting these barriers in your mind, that's when you're gonna start seeing the barriers yourself. I don't see barriers. I actually think that if I have an opinion and I feel that I have a right solution, I will talk about it. It doesn't matter who's in front of me. I may be wrong, I might be right, and we'll discuss it, right? And we will come to the right execution or the right solution. But it's not about male or female. I just believe in the right answer or the wrong answer or the right solution or the wrong solution. Um, and when you actually have enough of a knowledge to make an educated assumption to the situation or a solution, that's when um, you will be heard. Mm, that's true. Our key problem is always balance. Um, I think women, we have kids. So with that period of having kids, we have to take time out. And you are now in this global role. And how have you managed with so much traveling? How have you managed to do that role and do a great job, which everyone knows, you know, has been seeing your work and see how amazing you've done with just being in this um, position and still managed with the kids. How are you balancing both roles? Um, it's not easy. Um, and you certainly need to have a great support system to be able to do this. I think the one most important thing is to be very present at the moment. And when you're home, it's very easy to get distracted with this device or this device or another 20 devices that we have. And it's my own internal challenge because yeah. um, I need to remind myself to put it down because um, working with the world and on so many different time zones, it's not easy because there's always a, somebody awake somewhere. <laughs> so there's always a conversation to be had. Um, so it could easily be a seven days a week, 24 um, hours a day job. But I need to put my own boundaries in place and I need to be present with my kids, with my family when I'm present and put the devices away, whether I'm playing board games. My son sometimes reminds me to put my, 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 my device away and then I do and I put it away in this whole different room so I don't get distracted. Um, or if we're watching a movie, but truly be present in the moment. And if I'm dedicating my attention to my family, I'm going to give them my undivided attention. Um, and that quality, ver you know, quality versus quantity balance um, is what, what makes it work. We're just going through a pandemic, a pandemic with COVID-19 and so much has happened, so much has changed. People call, are calling it the new world. Um, you're looking at the business and seeing where you, um, where your business is. I'm sure what you were doing before is very different from what you're going to be doing now. How have you prepared yourself and prepared your team for the new challenges that you're facing and what ways of, yeah, ways you guys will be overcoming it? Um, it's hard to prepare for something like this, right? Because, um, it's one of those things when you've never seen anything like it, it's hard to know what to expect. So um, you can only manage what's in front of you and you can only manage um, almost one day at a time. So right now, the biggest challenge I see in our business is it's really hard to have a visibility to what's going to happen in the next 
three, six, nine months from now, because we don't know um, when everything is going to get back to normal, when the businesses are going to start operating as they were. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's really challenging to really think about how do we get back to reality? When are we going to travel again? When are we going to have face-to-face meetings and the conversations? Um, And so pretty much from the very beginning, I created a um, touch base every day with different parts around the world. So every team has a daily call with each other. And then um, in the beginning, I joined pretty much all of them around the world. Um, Then I do it sporadically. Um, Sometimes I join one team, sometimes I join another team, but they, in the very, every day in the morning, they talk about their priorities. They talk about the challenges. And as a group, they discuss where they should be focusing on and how um, they can help each other. That kind of um, solidarity, that kind of communication, that kind of, um, I almost feel like a group therapy to a degree (laughs) because um, it's hard to be in isolation, especially in our business when you're always- Traveler. When you're always, surrounded by your own peers and colleagues and clients, um, it's really challenging. On top of it all, a lot of people um, have kids at home. A lot of people have young kids at home. So it's also um, not about how do we uh, make sure people clock nine to five or eight to seven. It's more about the outcome. Because when you have young kids, you may be actually focusing on them between 12 and four in the afternoon because you have to. And therefore you're gonna have to do a lot more work in the hours that are, the kids are not busy or when they are busy. So for example, um, some of my um, um, folks around the globe would work early mornings when the kids are asleep or when the kids are um, in bed in the the afternoons or when they're napping. So it's, it's more about how do you plan better? So you have to become a better planner. How do you really put the right schedule in place? In the morning is when I do certain follow-ups. In the afternoon is when I'm able to, when they're napping, when I do certain calls with different parts around the world. In the evenings is when I, when I send these emails out. You have to kind of be thoughtful of how you, you think about your agenda for the day. You think about how you can prioritize. And again, it's more about the output. Um, it's not about the hours. Yeah, and having that flexibility, and I'm 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 never not going to be flexible as long as we have um, you know the communication and understanding. Mm. Uh, everyone needs to do it on their own terms and their own time. What fascinates me about yourself is that you have been in this career, and, and you know when you when I read your your bio, I'm just so impressed by it. But in your career, have you had a painful moment? Now, because people out there will be wondering, one of the key things we always try to get out is when someone has had a painful moment and how they've managed to navigate or overcome that painful um, period in their life. Have you had one that you could share? It doesn't matter whichever one, it could be right at the beginning of your career where you learned something and you said, this is something that was a painful time of my life and I just wanted to, i just glad I managed to do it this way to overcome it. And if anyone I know is going through such thing, I want them to do X, Y, Z. I mean, is there something you could share with us on that note? Um, Look, I think I've had many challenges um, in my life. I never really stopped and thought about it being a painful moment that I needed to put a plan in place to navigate. Mm. I've always been the kind of person that had a problem and then I needed to figure out how to solve for it. And it gone back, it could go back to when my family moved um, to the U.S. from Ukraine and I had to go to university without a word of English. I mean, that was to me the most painful moment because I had no idea how I was going to be going to university, studying um, in business school and barely speaking English. Um, And I could have broken down and said, I can't do it because I don't know how to learn the language, understand the grammar and understand how to um, learn business law all in the same year. Uh, But then you realize you kind of tackle all the challenges one step at a time. 
And this is what I think I learned and taught myself from that age, right? When I went to university mm -hmm. that, um, and I say this right now to everyone on my team, the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. <laughs> if you look at the problem as a whole, your natural reaction will be to stop, put everything down and say, I can't do it. Yeah. It's, too big. it's too challenging. I can't get over it. I can't get up there. I'll just stop. Yeah. Um, instead, you don't look at it as a whole big problem. You start realizing that in order to get there, there's a ladder, there are steps, there are things you can do. Mm. And when you start realizing there are steps and things and you start creating in your own mind for yourself, nobody else really, um, how do you get there? How do you start approaching any problem um, one solution at a time, you're going to realize you're going to achieve the result sooner than you realize. Mm -hmm. um, because um, if you start with a problem and, and just go head on, you will fail. But if you actually start nibbling it one at a time and, and, and building it up and, and growing into it, you'll succeed. Oh, well. I'm not going to keep you. I know you're absolutely very, very busy, but I just needed to you to give us one word of advice. There's so much going on in the world right now. It's just unbelievable amount of things going on in the world. Everything stems from pain, right? And your beginning, your beginning quote was, um, you started by saying to me, and I think I really love that you don't see anything. You just go, and this has what has made you successful in your where you are. And I say that, a lot to people when I talk about my own illness with sickle cell. I say to people, if I look at so much, my, I just can't take it and it'll be a barrier to my success. I just want your final word of advice, honestly, to um, all the young ladies out there. And I've spoken to so many in the past few weeks, especially during this pandemic, and a lot of them are going dealing with mental health issues because they're uncertain of what the world will bring, bring off and what tomorrow will be. How are you dealing with this? And how are you, what advice would you say to these young people to manage this? Um, short and sweet. Um, I would say, <laughs> believe in yourself, okay. invest in yourself. Um, the more you know, the more you learn, the more you understand about yourself and the world around you, the more you're going to be able to make a point and, and, a, and, and be an authority in the subject matter that you're in. And I think the, don't let everything around you influence your thinking. Yes. Um, truly focus on yourself and believe in yourself. That's the biggest advice I would, I would give to anyone, girls and boys. Yeah. Um, because you know what? I have uh, two boys and um, as much as I want to talk about um, how women need to be very thoughtful and how they need to be believing in themselves, I feel the same thing about boys. Yes, it's true. And they need to be very much confident and very much secure in themselves because they shouldn't be winning just because they're men. They should be winning because they're smart, because they're, because they're educated, because they understand something that other people don't. Mm -hmm. But it's not just because of gender. Nobody should be winning based on gender or color or anything. It should mm -hmm. truly be based on what they bring to the party. That's very good. Thank you so much, Victoria, for Pleasure. really Pleasure. joining me on this platform. I. I really look forward to many more conversations with you and we'll be following you, to, you at, the, at times to see what's, what the latest news is. Sounds Thank great. you. Speak so soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.